Welcome everyone to the final in our series, The Sisterhood of the Serpent. It's really been a pleasure to be able to take these fast past few weeks and spend these moments with you. We have received such incredible insight from so many different presenters that come to the mound. And tonight we have a special treat in store for all of you. And we're just gonna go ahead and, and just begin. So Jen, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Jen, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about that song? You just recently uh, wrote this piece, correct? Uh, yeah, um, it just came to me. I, a couple songs I've been uh, trying to write some more music in the Christian uh, world. I have some a team that I write with. And um, so I, I'm trying to combine all the worlds, you know, 
Uh, that's my my mission. Because I feel like Christianity, a lot of people are like, you know, against it for whatever reason. And, it, and I feel like everything's uh, the same, you know, we're all great spirit, you know, the giver of life. It's it's all the, the same. So uh, the song itself, it, it just, um, I feel like it's appropriate for the time, like the lyrics, I felt like the whole world needs to just return to the pure vibration of love, you know, if we all could get to that place, maybe it wouldn't be so hard, you know. Um, and with the wars, I just feel like we should be so past all this fighting. It's it's really hard to, to watch and uh, I don't know. So I'm, this was my prayer, you know, this is, a, I, I, pray, I, I pray this way and, and it grounds me. I want to bring the whole universe together, not just humanity, you know, so um, that's all. I'm kind of shy. I'm really nervous, but oh, you're as <laughs> lovely as always. And thank you so, so much for sharing that piece. And again, we cannot wait uh, for you to be at Serpent Mound where when we are all together again, we haven't seen you in several months. So we're really looking forward to it. And thank you so much for sharing your voice, your prayer. What, what a beautiful way to pray. Thank you. In song, thank, thank you. Thank you, Terry, for asking me. Thank you. I love you. I love you all. See you soon. To you. <laughs> so these past couple of weeks, we have, spent the first few moments in silence for Ukraine. And there have been stories shared about the Ukrainian community and about this beautiful grandmother um, that is here in Pittsburgh that I have the pleasure of sitting with on a weekly basis. And I went back to her home on Friday asked her to join us. And she immediately began to cry as she spends every Friday with me just crying and just hold that space for her. Um, this time of war is really difficult on her. She has several family members in Ukraine. And this is the first year that she's spending without her husband who just adored the Ukraine. And they shared so much common bond. Um, and he's no longer at her side. He passed while we were in Mount Shasta. And she's very teary-eyed, but she was so taken that she was asked to come on and to speak. She was so taken that she would like to present a gift for the community. And she does have some words that she would like me to share. Um, Benika and Michael were always taken by my relationship with this community, always in awe and it, reminded them so much of their community. And their daughter just recently shared some information with Malika that even Malika didn't even realize. And that is what she would like me to read to you today. That she gifted us for the community. Ukrainian scarf, which if it's okay with Terry and Thomas, maybe we can hang on the peace pool. Absolutely. And she would like me to read this to you because it does explain our connection. Where I come from, in the territory of the Ukraine, floral scarves have become iconic among many indigenous nations. 
These days, you'll even see these scars integrated into powwow regalia. The Cree people call them nokom scarves because nokom means your grandmother. A reminder of our grandmothers and a symbol that we carry them with us when we need them most. So why the floral scarf? On the prairies, there is a vast history of trade and commerce between indigenous nations. But what people may or may not recognize is the history of trade and cooperation between the original peoples and settlers. In fact, the Ukraine and Cree communities often worked closely together during times of major hardship and famine. Cooperation like this between indigenous nations and newcomers is a story that is found over and over again across Turtle Island. It was because of this trade commerce and cooperation that floral scarves became a symbol of strength and hard work. Long ago, when Ukrainian people arrived in this territory, they brought with them beautiful floral pattern fabrics that were a natural complement to the floral patterns found in Cree, Dini, and Metis beadwork. Our grandmothers adopted these patterns as they worked closely with their new neighbors to help each other. I guess that also explains why feasts in my community usually feature foods such as pierogies, cabbage rolls, alongside our traditional foods. So what does the floral scarf mean to me? When I was growing up, I often watched my grandmother with her hair tied up in a scarf, picking berries, preparing meat, cooking for a feast, or watching the grandkids. To me, grandmother scarves are a symbol that embodies the intrepid and entrepreneurial spirit of my grandmothers, the women who worked relentlessly to find opportunity and to build relationships and cooperation among families and nations to ensure our survival. That's what grandmother scarves mean to me. It also represents a love for one another. A love for all. Marika would like to thank each and every one of us for holding space for them. They understand even more so how we share the same struggles, but yet we're here, we're here for each other. And to have that support in knowing that prayers are being said and that they are being held in a sacred space makes them feel so comfortable. So on behalf of Malika and her entire family and the Ukrainian community here in Pittsburgh, they would like to say thank you. So I will bring this scarf to the mound and place it on the peace pool. Terry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, would you like Claudia to speak now? Is there anything you would like to say before she speaks? No, because I think I, um, Claudia, I know is shy, um, but she's being bold to come to let us hear her prayer and her words. Beautiful. So, Claudia, if I may have you unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here with all you, and thank you, Terry, um, for this opportunity to pray with all you guys because um, I love you all so very, very much. Um, I 
I was praying for guidance for this prayer, um, for this special day with you all, um, for the Ukrainians, Russians, and everyone in this world, the good, the bad, the victims, the victimizers, the evil, the innocent. All life is precious and we are all God's children. You know the saying um, that what you're experiencing in your external world is a reflection of what's happening in the internal world, both in our personal and collective lives, in some way, shape, or form. So if we are experiencing this war, even though it's on the grounds of Ukraine, um, then there's some, we have, each of us have some belief or some wound attached to war. Um, so it's up to us each individually to get to, to, get to that. Um, this prayer is a combination of my daily prayers uh, with some parts of it that I heard and I say daily by Michael and my dad. The first part of this prayer is for ourselves. Um, it's like putting the oxygen mask on ourselves first or like Chief Golden Light Eagle says, to heal ourselves first before healing others. And also surrendering our will to the, for the will of Mother, Father, God. What God has in store for us is greater than anything we can imagine by ourselves alone. We co-create it with God, source, creator, and allow ourselves to be guided by a higher power unattached to any outcome. Sometimes things don't make sense until later. We just have to keep the faith that no matter what is happening on the outside, hold strong to the faith of the divine holy truth. Just like Jesus was walking with the cross and there were women weeping for him on the side of the road, Jesus said, and I'm just going to paraphrase it because these are not the exact words, but this is how I understood it. Um, to not believe what you're seeing with your eyes, but to see and feel the divine truth, which is with her third eye. And in Chiefs and Jones' symbol book on page 260 is the Ista Wanzi, one eye, the eye of the understanding. Truth is the truth is the eye that is single. The, the eye that is pure is the eye of spirit. And then in the book it reads, O oh people, walk in the silence of love according to the wisdom of the heart and it's the mystery of creator's face shall your one eye perceive. I am one eye here to bless the people with the vision of truth, with the vision of love, and with the vision of sacred awakening. And then with our third eye, we bridge our external and, and, and internal worlds to, together and allow ourselves to be brave and really honest with ourselves to see whatever we need to see within ourselves. And then the second part of the prayer is for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, Russia, and Poland. My mom said that there are no camps or special housing made for the Ukrainians, but just random people are welcoming, welcoming, sorry, <laughs> so nervous. They're welcoming, welcoming, <laughs> welcoming them into their homes. For all the pain that we are experiencing, whether it was triggered by the actions of others or not, it is our responsibility to care for and address whatever we are feeling inside ourselves. It's very easy to lash out on others, um, you know, like uh, you heard the saying that you can break something in two seconds, but it takes time, effort, and patience to heal, um, even if it was justified or not. The greatest form of magic is to take anger or whatever we're feeling inside ourselves and to transmute it into love. That becomes the fuel for the, for the fire inside of ourselves to manifest our dream life, heaven on earth for all of us. So let's hold space for each other as we all shine love and light and transmute all negative energy into divine white light, surrendering to creator and co-creating heaven on earth by following our hearts. Um, before I pray, I always take uh, a bottle of essential oil. So any oil, if you have anything by you guys, um, just take whatever you choose is, is perfect. Um, and I like to put it on my palm and then do three clockwise circles and take a deep breath, which I really need right now to calm my nerves. <laughs> um, and now I'll begin the prayer. We call upon Mother, Father, God, Source, Creator to guide us to the hurts and pains within us. 
May we release them with grace and ease from any time, past, present, future, in any dimension, timeline, and direction. May our Holy Divine Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother Mary's immaculate heart wash over our emotional body and the emotional bodies of all human beings in all dimensions, timelines, and directions. Divine Mother, let your energetic waves of your pure heart wash through and transmute our hurts and pains and the hurts and pains of all people so we can attend the vision and will to rise above our fears and wounds. Awaken us to the reality this is heaven on earth. Archangel Raphael, thank you for filling our mind, body, soul, heart, and spirit with your beautiful emerald healing healing energy. We surrender our emotions so we can process our past without feeling so overwhelmed. We know it's not always necessary, but we are willing to witness, if need be, all of our emotional pain. We invoke waves of healing to wash through our emotional bodies to cleanse and transmute all past wounds that once overwhelmed us. All the power of heaven stands with us and within us. We are willing to love ourselves so unconditionally in all situations from our past. The light has come. We have forgiven all. The peace of Mother, Father, God, Source, Creator is shining in us now. I am as God created me. I will to be the Christ and unity consciousness on earth. We we call upon our star family, the Palladians, Arcturians, Sirens, Lyrians, Adramegians, sorry, pronounced that wrong, um, Anunnaki, thank you for anchoring light codes within us and on earth. We choose the integration of earth to the highest timeline for the benefit of all life on earth in the most perfect way with grace and ease now. I am one with God and with all my brothers and sisters. We affirm that Archangel Michael and his legions transmute all planetary forces that are negative to Christ and unity consciousness may it be transmuted into divine white light with grace and ease. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, Creator, Source, for surrounding all the people in Ukraine, Russia, and Poland with with beautiful angelic shields, protecting them, keeping them safe, and guiding them to their safety and their highest timeline for the good of all. Thank you, Creator, for providing them with safety, nourishment, warmth, and love. Thank you, Divine Mother, for cleansing and transmuting all pain, suffering, anything that is not of Christ and unity consciousness of all people in the Ukraine and on their lands into divine crystal light. God is raising the earth into a glorious new day. We choose to be the will of Mother, Father, God. We choose a life of unity and Christ consciousness. The kingdom of heaven is manifest in me now and on earth and forever. And so it is. Aho. Om Namah Shivaya, Amen, Mitakui, Oyasi. And then Terry also asked me to say a Polish prayer, and um, I decided to, in one of her songs, she um, she says the Hail Mary, so I decided to say the Hail Mary in Polish. Okay. Zdrowaś Maryjo, łaski pełna, Pan z Tobą, błogosławiona jesteś, Błogosławiona Ty między niewiastami i błogosławiony owoc żywota Twojego, Jezus. Święta Maryjo, Matka Boża, módl się za nami, módl się za Ukrainę i w godzinę śmierci naszej. Amen. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. It was beautiful. Terry, I'm going to turn it over to you now. I'm truly moved. Um, You know, we can talk about gifts that Creator has given us. And I'll say that one of the gifts Creator gave me was to be bold. To be bold when He talks to me and tells me of these people that are usually um, um, hidden in the crowd. That when the creator asked me um, to have them speak, just like he said, Claudia from Poland, Claudia from Chicago, 
Um, you need to you need to speak up. You have beautiful words and um, beautiful talents. And um, today, you just confirmed that um, that I am listening to the source. Uh, the story that um, Carla told, the grandmother's cloth or scarf, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? People um, coming together, all nations, all races, all our relations. We started this whole journey of putting on peace summits bit by bit by bit, people by people, um, divine beings by divine beings. Um, most are still with us to this day when we started about um, 12 years ago. And everyone is equal and important. And peace is so important. That's why I said, join us in peace. We've had some beautiful um, peace activists, Fumi, who would bring all the flags in from 193 countries that belong to the UN. And she told me each one of those flags she prays over when she takes them out and when she puts them back. And so one time when someone was trying to spin it around, she very um, lovingly, but stern said, do not do that. These are countries we're praying for. Um, the peace poll. The peace poll, um, when it was designed um, by Sherwin Zephyr, Chief Blue Star Eagle. Thomas and I were lucky enough to be married at 11-11 on 11-11-11 at 11-11. That peace poll was in our hearts. Then he brought it to the Serpent Mound. And then I asked chief, I said, you know, I need to figure out how to get a peace poll for this area. And he said, you come to Sundance in Iowa. And we went there. We were there with Jen and Marchin and um, with, with um, Connie Davis and Chris Davis and Deborah Brubaker and her husband and Mark McGuire, we all went there to the Sundance and there was a ceremony, a beautiful ceremony. And he gifted us that peace poll saying now our communities, our family are joined. A peace poll is here in the shop and we still have people that will come just to come pray with that, that poll. All these little, um, all these little stories and connections, uh, they just create um, a giant light grid to everybody. Um, all our speakers, um, I have to tell you, most of our speakers they don't ask for money. Um, Chief Golden Light Eagle never asked for money to be here. He knew that he needed to be with the people. We were fortunate enough most times to make enough money that we could gift back to people. We could give them um, a luxurious bunk <laughs> in the bunkhouse. Okay. And... Um, 
nobody complained. Nobody said, um, yeah, I need something different. I need something better. They were just so happy to be a part of this peace grid. And they continue to be that way. Um, we're so blessed with so many people here. Um, the song came to me several years and excuse me, I've got a cough, so I don't know how well I'll sing it if I'll get through it, but we'll try. And um, it's called Bend Down. And when that, the first part of the song, <coughs> it came to me because I had a dream, I had a vision and um, the towers were falling and the Wars were starting. An old Walter Cronkite came on and he said, um, this is it. Now we know he's gone and we hope it's not it. And we know that if we continue to pray and work our prayers, we'll be fine. Yuhu <laughs> You are the echo, Bend down and listen to the heartbeat, bend down and listen to the call. Is it saying you must tell yourself and then help to heal? the others is it then we can heal this land look up and listen to the heartbeat look up and listen to the call is it saying you must tell yourself and then help to heal the others and then we can heal this land. Come together, come together, come together, heal your heart, heal your land. Kindness carrying healing light wrapped around this land. I have heard this earth can't go much longer. And at times we can feel the same. But tomorrow will bring a brighter day if we all begin to pray. Look inside and listen to the heartbeat. Look inside and listen to the call. Now when voices say, I'm healed today. And now let us heal this land. Come together, come together, come together, heal your heart, heal this land. Kindness carrying healing light wrapped around this land. Thank you. Thank you, Terry.
Thank you for year after year, gathering after gathering. I keep coming back for more. <laughs> You're what brings this community together. You know, everything that um, with this gathering, everything just comes directly to the mound. Yes. So Thomas, we would love to hear from you as well. What is I'm... it? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no. Do you want to hear from me? Here I am. Here you are. Yeah. yeah. What, does, what does this gathering mean to you? And you know, you've been doing this for 12 years now. The How gathering has it changed you? Uh well. <laughs> I was invited to my first gathering in 2010. And um, Terry said, you need to come and, and talk about the crater. And I, I went, it was at Woodland Altars at the Heritage. And Terry was downstairs in the conference room selling these big geodes from Iowa and Kentucky. I thought, well, those are cool. She goes, oh, you have to, you have to go give a, a talk upstairs to some grandmothers and people. And I walked upstairs and they were all sitting there and everybody was arguing. Oh. All of these women from different tribes were arguing amongst themselves. And I thought, wow, what, what, what kind of group is this? <laughs> and, um, so I gave them a talk about the crater and they all just paid attention, asked questions. They were all grateful and we all became friends. And it was like forming a bridge between this, this guy who is a white guy with a lot of native people, which I had never been in contact with. And that was the beginning of our what you might say an association or a, it was like building a bridge. And to this day, it's, it just continues on. It gets stronger and stronger. It's woven. It's like burlap. I mean, it, it doesn't come apart. It, it just keeps going and going and going and reaching out. And the threads are, are not only connected with uh, across the world, but across the universe. And just the way nature is, it's everything. I, I've learned that everything in this world and the universe is connected by strings, by little tentacles. I don't care if it's a piece of dirt or a blade of grass. Um, we're living in, we're all part of this huge organism. And it's all being controlled by an energy called God. And we're all gods. Every, every one of us and I've over the years I've learned that we all have the power to change the situation and it's all done through meditation and prayer and Terry has taught me a great deal about myself and and the ability to speak and and reach out and communicate with other people and bring them together and the the old rock shop has been a focal point of meeting and, and greeting and connecting people together from all over the world. And I found everybody has a story. Everybody has a gift. And to bring it all together and get people to talk about it and make them realize that they're being heard. Yeah. I think that's the most important part of it is that um, just every single day I hear a different story and a different gift and it's just, it just amazes me. So I feel blessed to be in this situation in this place where it's allowing this all to happen and uh, being able to share it is, is the most important part. And, and to have to have this group, to have you, to have this Zoom, uh, it makes it all possible. 
So why do you think, Thomas, why do you think Serpent Mound is so special? Well, Serpent, Serpent Mound, I'm beginning to realize over the years is that it is um, a vortex of energy. And um, theoretically vortexes are liquid. And if you think about the air and the water and the moisture and the energy, it is liquid. And it swirls around this area and people gravitate to it. People show up and don't even know why they're here. And it's like a light bulb went off in their head and they said, we got to go there. We don't know why we're going, but we're going. And I've heard this story hundreds of times and they're just, they're, they're waking up. And I, I think we're moving through a phase in, in this uh, time that the universe is, is beginning to get hardwired. Uh, people are tuning in, whether they like it or not. I think it's reaching out and connecting uh, peoples and ideas. And so it, that's one thing I want to talk about at this next conference <coughs> is about how, how these energies come about, how they work why they're here and you know there's several places around the earth like this and i've realized that there's several groups hundreds of groups like ours around the earth that are doing exactly the same thing and i kind of make the analogy it's like the olympics you see the seven rings and they're all joined together and they're all different countries and when you watch the olympics you see all the athletes they're all all trying their darndest to do their best but they're all human just like us um they're all different walks of life but they put the drama and the politics aside and they're just striving to do their best and that's what brings everyone together and so just forget about what's going on in this world and just do your best and let people know your feelings and learn how to share. So that's where I am. Wise words, learn how to share. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> so, Misa, I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Hello. We've heard. Hello. <laughs> Long time no see. <laughs> um, we um, we have heard from so many of our presenters. You are also presenting. You are a big part of the organizing of this particular event. You know, just so everybody knows, she's the one that's keeping Terry and I in line. <laughs> things. <laughs> um, so Lisa came into this community through um, her association with me. And I'm really curious, Lisa, <laughs> what is your takeaway from all of this so far? And here you are this year, you were such a big part of this. You know, something that Thomas just said really um, turned a light bulb on in my memory. And it, it, it's more about the, the idea of people being turned on, <laughs> you know, whether they ask for it or not. And this is something that I've really um, been so amazed by over the course of the last several years, especially just watching people wake up and turn on and tune in and come together. And for, for whatever reason, at the end of 2020, even though I only live four and a half hours away, um, 
I thought at the winter solstice, I, I really wanted to make a pilgrimage to somewhere sacred that I could drive to. And I went on a hunt and the serpent mound came up. And I was shocked to learn that something so powerful and so amazing was so close, yet I did not know about it. And unfortunately, I didn't make the trek on that day, but it started a series of, of synchronicities. Um, it was like the, the call went out. I, I, I had an opportunity um, to then let things fall into place. And I thought I would go to the serpent in the spring and that didn't work out. And that's when you and I started our relationship through, through the Sophia group. And I can sit here today with more gratitude than I can stand, um, recognizing that these connections are made so easily that we are sewn together so perfectly and that this opportunity for us to come together here in just a few more days is going to do so much for the world because it's going to do so much for each one of us and you know i the, being new to every the whole the whole gathering in the fall and watching and feeling and just being witness was such an amazing honor even though I, I rarely left the registration um, area which was like uh, really awesome to be able to greet every person that came through but just feeling the land there and recognizing how miraculous it, it was to to be there. Um, I know that we are birthing a new world. I'm confident of those things. And all I've ever wanted was to do my part. And I know that so many things have drifted in and out of my realm to create this space. And every face I look at and every person that I come in community with in here in Zoom, here in soon in person has completed me and completed my journey in such a beautiful way. So with that, like I said, I'm in awe. I'm, I'm filled with more gratitude than I can bear. And I can't wait to really watch everything <laughs> unfold as, as we gather together in just a few days. Thank you, Lisa. Carla? Yes, Terry. I just want to tell on Thomas right now. Oh, please do. <laughs> yeah, he's usually, um, he's a rock. You know, he's my rock and um, but I looked over at him uh, while he was talking and after he was talking, he was wiping tears from his eyes. And um, what we say about those tears, what I've always said is that's holy water. It's the purest form of holy water you can ever get. It's something that comes from your soul, from your heart. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you for sharing that. It's, um, it's so amazing just to hear everyone speak from their heart and it's beautiful to see and to hear of Thomas being able to shed that tear because this is a beautiful moment. This is exciting. Um, us all gathering in one space together. Um, you can feel the anticipation just brewing as we get closer and closer. I mean, today I could really feel it. It was just like everything in me was just like vibrating today. Um, it's as if like 
I'm, I'm there. Like part of me is already there. So it's, it's really interesting. I'm sure it's like that for a lot of you as well, because we can't, we just can't wait to see each other and be together again as one. So thank you for telling on time. And it's beautiful to have a man to be able to shed those tears. Arla, may I share, please? Absolutely. Okay. Share a couple things that I noticed <clears throat> at the last gathering. And it and um, Terry, I really in in sharing this, I really want to honor you because what I saw was that everyone or most everyone that was there had like a grid. Everyone was connected by a, not a cord, but a sliver of light. So when I looked out on the gatherings, what I saw was this magnificent spider web that was formed. And and it was absolutely beautiful. So the people that are coming are those, you know, when, when Creator, when we all volunteered and Creator said, you know, go down and help this happen, he couldn't put us all in the same place because <laughs> that just wouldn't work. So he scattered us. He just, I get this image of taking, um, garden seed and just throwing it, you know, so it goes all over every place. And so what I saw was that the peace gathering is almost like a university. All of us that are out there by ourselves or out there teaching to other groups, we also need to be fed. We need that love. We need to be in a place where we know there's peace. And Terry, that's what I see you doing is this magnificent um, university, support, love, you know, um, and connection. Because as I looked around and even as I look tonight, I recognize many of you from other times and, and other places and feel strong connections to you. And, and also from other dimensions and from the um, galactic councils that some of you are on and the, you know, but sometimes, and I've watched this in particular in this group, is that when something really magnificent is going to happen, then there are forces out there who try to prevent you getting there. Whether it is people that have dropped out or drivers that have, have um, at the mass last minute said they couldn't take you and all kinds of craziness. And I just watch it and I say, we're strong. We're strong enough, you know? So it is just incredible. It's just incredible to watch. And, and Terry, I, I know you don't accept praise well, but I'm going to give it tonight anyway, that without you and without those that help you, the, this, this healing, this support, this group of people who all come together with nothing but love and peace in their heart. And if we create that, that um, matrix there, that portal, then it can go out all over the planet. And so it is with great honor that I honor each of you. And Terry, uh, bless you, bless you for everything you do, are, and I love you dearly. Vopila. Thank you. Well, say, Barbara, um, thank you for that. And I almost said that about 
this gathering is going to be so divinely led that there are some forces out there. And so don't let it get you down. Just keep on moving forward. I'm amazed about some of the people who are just out of the blue showing up like Bishop um, Daryl and uh, Big Bai. Um, but we are honored to have you, Barbara Vitale. Thank you. Rhonda, I have you unmute yourself. Thought I was going to be able to escape this. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. You should be used to this by now with me. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Before you ask any question, I want to say how full my heart is. It actually is hurting this wide. It is so full of just love and gratitude. And I just like. I am right there with you. I'm so excited to be there as physically as I am, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally there already. I mean, picking out my bed and everything. <laughs> Hello, love. Hello. So for those of you that maybe have not met Rhonda, um, Rhonda has been a part of this community for quite some time now. And last year, she was an incredible help and gift in, in helping with the workshops and being the MC for the workshops. And this year, Rhonda is going to help me at the main stage. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. How exciting. Um, so, Rhonda, I, I pose that question, you know, to you as well, you know, you've been a part of this community for, for quite some time. Um, and you really have um, been a part of so many of the ceremonies. How have these experiences changed you? Because when you come to the mound, it's your happy, it's an experience. It's, it's not, uh, you're just not coming to hear people talk, like you're having an experience, you're taking part in the ceremony. Wow. Um, I want to share first the image that you see there on Terry's video. In the center, you see the serpent and the turtle, I believe is what's there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day in 2016, I found a drum online. <laughs> and I had been looking for a drum since 2003. And I could not find one that I loved. So I found my drum and I got it and I played it and I loved it. And then I found myself on a mailing list, which was um, questionable. And I then saw so many of the people that I know and love and admire deeply in an invitation to come to Serpent Mound. I started having visions of many pasts with the serpent. And within those visions, um, it was intense. So spirit told me I had to be there a day early and I was, and I was there as Terry and Thomas were setting up for their spring seed ceremony and star knowledge conference. And uh, the most wonderful people, along with all the rain, I gotta say, <laughs> a lot of rain, it was cold. Uh, I immediately fell in love with everyone that I met. Having the connections that I already had was really comforting to go into a new space. So for those of you who walk into a new space without having prior knowledge of anyone in it, uh, I applaud you and I'm so grateful. I've been now either five or six springs and three fall ceremonies. Um, 
it is transformative i find i find myself i'll say that when i started going there i was hiding i was afraid i'm not anymore <laughs> if anybody who knew me then knows me now um yeah i'm no longer hiding i'm not hiding any part of me and um i i think serpent mound and star knowledge for that uh there are others but for the most part this is my family and others that i meet i want to drag here <laughs> i'm not coming here to take anybody there i'm taking everybody belongs here the friends that i have brought in with me the friendships that i've made the connections oh the realizations and the synchronicities and the healings and how much more I, I don't even know i don't even know how to say anything further or deeper than that it's been wonderful miraculous life affirming you know just a tiny bit of stuff <laughs> that's all <laughs> um carla yes we're so happy that Rhonda um, heard the call and is stepping up to the plate as many people out there who come to our events end up feeling guided or asked to step up they do yeah. I also want to thank Connie Davis um, she's also an MC this year, we'll get to see her um, at least one day. And so she's taking a break this time. Um, but we look forward to seeing her again. And then you'll have three of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So Terry, how does, how does it feel um, in hearing about everyone's experience. I mean, you know, Lisa being so new to this um, whole experience with us, Rhonda taking part in it, Claudia taking part in it now, like using her voice. How, how does that sit and make you feel you and Thomas both? Wow. I, how you are changing lives. I am. I'm overcome. I mean, you hear things here and there, but to hear the long story, um, wow. And it's, it's, it's called that divine energy, that creator's love and light. Jen Knowles, first time she showed up at our shop. Well, we went to Chicago to speak and it was during some riots and it was tough and the energy was tough. They were like hard boiled eggs that you had to crack them open. And then they finally released and bre breathed and, and it was beautiful, but um, no buts. But Jen, she came to our shop and we have this really nice old piano in our shop. Somebody said, Jen knows how to play and sing. I said, oh, good. I think it was when Mazatson was here. And I walked into the shop and heard her playing and that fabulous voice she has. It's like, wow. Hey, you want to come to our event? She said, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, this... Who knew that this, this was going to be so moving, um, but I love it. Thank you. Thomas, how about you? How does, how does that sit with you? About. He just left for a minute. So rephrase. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Um, we were talking about how 
this gathering has really changed so many lives and you know you and Terry being the key component in that you know to hear their stories of how it's changed them and I'm sure you hear so much day in day out in the shop how does how does that feel to you how how does that make you feel it's it's um in a way it's overwhelming and I try not to dwell on it because I'd probably be crying all the time. <laughs> I might be a rock, but I got tears in there. <laughs> uh, it, it's gratifying to, to see um, the witness, um, what Terry has been trying to do in community building. And it's not, it's not nation building, it's not by force. Um, it's, and it's not religious. It's a whole different way of, of bringing people together with their hearts and, and hearing, you know, hearing their stories and it's to see it come to fruition is, um, I know to Terry, it's like a dream come true. And to me, it's just, uh, I'm in awe to see it, um, happen. It's just, uh, there, I can't, I can't really explain it. It's a feeling and it's a really good feeling. And I know that it can't be obtained any other way, but through uh, hard work and help from a whole group of people that are willing to, to put the time in and, and uh, make, make the ends meet and tie the little knots and uh, what you might say, sew it up. And we're, we've made a big, we've made a big basket full of souls. <laughs> if, you, if there is such a, if there is such a meaning, but um, it, it's just, uh, to me, it's just amazing to see it happen. And especially this event has really come together uh, faster than other events of course we're still a few days out so there there may be there may be some people dropping out at the last second of course but um like like uh doing a sweat lodge the people that make it there are the ones that are supposed to be there and that's the way we have to look at all these events the people that make it there they're the ones that are supposed to be there say something about the ley lines and the greater and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> Terry said, say something about the ley lines in the crater. But I think um, I've, always, I've always looked at the earth as being a grid. And all of these city centers are, are on grids. They're all connected. And I think our uh, past civilizations have gravitated to these energy centers, if you will. And it's you know when you hear people say oh you're on a grid you're on this and well it's true and on a big picture if you were to look at the earth it, it would be connected with all these lines and the fault systems that run through this area are the faults that run through other areas other vortexes if you will where people gravitate and are doing the same thing that we're doing uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are doing it for money. And what people don't realize is that these events don't generate enough money to, uh, uh, they barely make enough to pay for themselves. And uh, one, of the, one of the people that own the place where we're, where we're doing our event, um, I told him our ideas and, and what we were doing. And, and he says, well, he said, this is all about making money. You need to raise your prices. You need to make more money. And I said, no, 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 you missed the whole picture. I said, this is about bringing people together. And I lost him at that. I haven't talked to him since. And so he just keeps raising our prices. <laughs> but that's, that's the greed, you know, and he's a very, he's a very spiritual man, which is really funny. He's very religious and he's always 
he's very business minded. And I think in, in this situation, what we're doing, we're, we're not, uh, we're not greedy. Uh, we just want people to come together and enjoy. And, and I think we've succeeded in that. And uh, when I say we, I mean everybody that's involved in this. Yeah. And it's, it's been a long time uh, coming, uh, weaving it together, if you will. Like I said before, it's like burlap, uh, the cross section of fabrics and it's, it's turning into a, the big basket of souls. <laughs> there you have it. In a nutshell. <laughs> I like that analogy, a big basket of souls. That's yeah. beautiful. Cuddle puddle. Cuddle puddle. Cuddle puddle. It is a big cuddle puddle. <laughs> <laughs> so before we have Terry end with her final words and, and thoughts, I would like to turn it over to each and every one of you with one word to one sentence of what you feel in coming to the mounds and gathering with these communities. And I'm gonna start with Lisa. I know, sorry, sorry. <laughs> one word, oh goodness, one, one word. One word to one sentence. One word, to, okay, okay. Oh, that's a range. <laughs> a word, three words, five words, seven words max. <laughs> I hear, okay, I'm with you. I feel right at home. Beautiful. Helen, I'm going to have you unmute yourself. Same question. I'm coming home. Oh, welcome. 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 Jen. I'd say um, magnetic. Mm. I like that word. <sighs> Grandmother Barbara Vitelli. Remembering. Chris, may I have you unmute yourself? Uh, I'm gonna, my vibration. Ooh, good word. Beautiful. Kelly, is it possible for you to unmute yourself? Magnetic, infinite inspiration. My family. I love you all. Love you. Home. Definitely home. home. Absolutely. Claudia. Uh, love. Just that the purest love that is possible. That's what I feel with you guys in that serpent mount. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. Daryl. I have to say uh, a contagious agape portal. Mm. Just infectious. I like it. And so I have to I have to ask Daryl for those those folks that don't understand agape, can you please say that? I know it's more than one word. <laughs> so here, the, the Latin language really gives us a lot more to understand. You know, English, we have one word for love, and that's agape. In Latin, there's agape. I mean, I mean, the English is just love. I mean, the Bible is just love. But in the Latin, there's philia, eros, uh, stoic love, and agape love. Really, a love would be the kind of love that a man has for a woman. 
And the storage love would be like friendship love. We like people who like us. And Eros love is the more intimate type of love. But agape love is the creator love. It's the God love. It's the love that there's nothing you're ever going to do that caused me to not be in love or to love you. It's the love that a mother has for her children. It's unconditional love. And that's what I feel like the family at Serpent Mound. When I discovered Serpent Mound, it's, it's an agape portal. You know, when you get in there or he calls you into what it is, it's like a mother calling you home. You know, and you know when you get there, you're you're like back in the womb. You're in the safest place you could be, and people can attack you, or whatever, trying to prevent you. But once you get there, man, you're good to go. <laughs> you're home. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for that. Excellent. And I love that because when we end at our place, when we end our lodges, it's like we're all womb mates now. Mm -hmm. We're all womb mates. Thank you, Daryl. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Rhonda. My sentence. I feel overwhelming love and appreciation. Mm. <clears throat> Beautiful. Auntie Pookie Lee. Deep sacred connections and unity. Luana. Awakening from a sleep. Mm. Last September was my first time, and only time to separate round. And, and it was at night when we arrived, and when I got out of the car to go to the cabin, I got to the cabin and I took such a fall. I slipped and landed on my back. And it was like a wake up call. And I was totally surprised I didn't get hurt. Not hurt at all. So it was like an awakening. So I look forward to coming back in September. <laughs> Um, Ross, can you unmute yourself? And if you cannot, we go. Oh, there we go. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, anticipation. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> Great word. Oh, Misty, can you unmute yourself? And give us a word up to a sentence. Okay, we can come back to Misty. Uh, Ms. Amani. Hello, everybody. I'm even the fires. I'm bringing the energy of the serpent who lives over here to see the serpent who lives over there and help with the DNA and the star people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, ben Vivio, is he still here? Is that his? No, Ben's not here. Um, I only see iPhone. So I don't know who this is and I don't see a number. I know peace was their word. So peace. whoever's, whoever's bringing peace. Whoever is peace, <laughs> please unmute yourself. Okay, we, can, we can come back if they cannot. Carla, would you like to unmute yourself? That's okay, we can come back to it. Did I miss anybody? No, that's everybody. So Terry. Yeah. Wow, this has been an amazing three weeks. Um, this is something we've been talking about doing for some time, but you know, here we are, it happened. Thanks to Lisa, we were able to um, work as a team make this happen. And this has been incredible. And I just, 
this is something that I see us doing in, in the future. This is absolutely amazing. And it's just incredible how this has just grown and grown because I remember the days when it was just all outside wind blowing and, and, and it's amazing how much it's grown and the people that come are, are just incredible. And you've created such an incredible community because you are so inclusive to everyone. And that of course comes from that piece within you that you, you know the importance of that, that oneness that we're all in this together. So with that being said, what, what are your final thoughts, words before we all gather, you know, we're gonna be together and we a couple more days away. Well, I can't, it's so exciting to see who shows up. I mean, people show up, it's like, whoa, whoa. And the, and the new friendships, the new family, it comes together. Um, the, the food vendor that cooks beautiful food in a good way. Um, all this, all the speakers, I mean, we've got some amazing speakers. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think. Cause I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors. That's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. True colors are beautiful like a rainbow. Thank you. Thank you, Terry, and thank you, Thomas, for the two of you and all that you do in bringing us together. And you too, Carla. <laughs> thank you. I, I think hope. Carla just showed up and um, <laughs> next thing you know, she's helping us out. One time we let her MC, she said, whoa, this girl's got skills. <laughs> And um, we couldn't do it without you. And we so appreciate Lisa for jumping on board. I saw a video, if you guys check out Pookie Lee's um, page, Pookie Lee, she had a video of her, her singing a song and it, it was beautiful. Maybe Pookie Lee can say briefly about what that song was about. <laughs> oh, you unmute yourself, Auntie. The song was all about gratitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see here. Um, my heart is full of gratitude, flowing deep inside. My heart is full of gratitude, flowing deep inside. I am grateful, grateful, grateful for my life. I am grateful, grateful, grateful for my life. Yes, and I am so grateful to be gathering with all of you and to be bringing my heart, my love, my aloha to share with all of you. Thank you so much for welcoming me in such a beautiful way. I'm so excited to be with you again. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And we have to say that there are this year more ceremonies than before. I mean, we start off on Friday with Carla's moon ceremony and then we go to uh 
grandmother Vitali and her Celtic moon ceremony. Um, and folks are just excited about that because you see native ceremonies, but the Celtic ceremony is wonderful. And then the next day we have sunrise ceremony with the Aztec ceremonialists and then the evening with the Aztec ceremonialists. We also, in the middle of the day, so folks that wanna leave on Sunday, they should really stay because we have Matthew Campbell that's gonna do the snake dance, the shedding of the skin. And this is a dance that um, Chief Blue Star Eagle started. And um, it is just, Beautiful. And then his brother did it after him, Chief Golden Light Eagle. And, you know, I can't say much enough about both of them because we did ceremonies and we did this event. But when they came on board, um, just with their love, it helped even more. Um, so, ceremony, fires. Pookie Lee is doing a Saturday sunrise ceremony. Um, with can you Miss just, Imani, with Miss Imani. Can you tell us, Pookie Lee, what your morning ceremony is about? Yes, this is all about Ho'oponopono. It's going to be an opportunity for us to come and do some forgiveness work as we enter into the spring equinox, right? As we're shedding, as we're coming out of our own darkness and into the light. And so um, uh, Ms. Imani and I are gonna collaborate for the first time together. And uh, she's a beautiful fire tender that I've worked with in the past uh, over Zoom, on Zoom, but this is gonna be our first meeting in the physical. And so it's gonna be a beautiful experience of blending our hearts together and bringing an opportunity for healing to come amongst our family and for us to release um, our unforgiveness and to heal together as one thank you thank, thank you Terry, for you saying yes saying yes thank you <laughs> how could i say no but carla maybe you can tell us about the full moon ceremony and it's like one of the first full moon ceremony full moons we have for our spring event carla can you Talk about what your moon ceremony is about. Yeah, this it's going to be a marvelous night for a moon dance. Woo! <laughs> to quote a little Van Morrison. Um, it's going to be a beautiful evening of aligning with the moon, the earth, the universe, uh, Mother Earth, also with the cycles of the moon and the cycles within us. And also with unifying the masculine and the feminine and our relationship to the white drop and the red drop, which is in all of creation. And this is going to be an experience for all to participate in. And as we dance, different emotions will arise as to the direction and the season that we are dancing in. And as those emotions arise, whatever emotions come up that we wish to release, we're gonna write them down on paper, place them into the fire to go up. For all the goodness that comes, we're gonna tuck it inside us and keep dancing with it. And as more goodness comes, we're gonna tuck more inside us so that we see that all the goodness is here and we can allow for the healing to occur for all the shadow that arises because through the shadow we learn so much and through the shadow we step forward into the light. So we're also gonna experience a connection with our ancestors and our ancestral line and helping to heal all the traumas of the past of our line because when we do the work we heal the past generations and we also help our future generations to come. 
So it's going to be a beautiful ceremony, and I hope that you will all be there in attendance for this ceremony. It will be an honor to dance with each of you. The drummers are going to play for us. We got a beautiful fire that uh, we're going to light. So I look forward to seeing everyone there. And I'm um, Matthew Campbell's not here, right? He is not. Okay. Um, and I don't mean to take this over because I said I was leaving early, right? Uh, but maybe Barbara Vitelli, I don't know how much, how much time do we have left? No, that's okay. Let, let grandmother Vitelli tell about her Celtic ceremony. Thank you. Okay. This is, um, <laughs> I'm wondering if, um, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes. I can't see me. I went away. There I am. <laughs> I was just thinking that we will all be so healed, we may become transparent. <laughs> so, I, I've been in ceremonies where people have just disappeared. So, um, you know, <laughs> it is possible. The Celtic ceremony, you know, I usually come as a um, <clears throat> Lakota grandmother, but um, I am also Celtic and, um, and Cherokee. So my um, <clears throat> grandmother taught me the old Celtic ceremonies, which means that we will not be using any of the names like Bridget or any of the names. This goes way behind that. But like Carla's, uh, we do do some releasing and um, uh, I'm just going to play with that to see if I can find a place after I attend yours where we can release that you haven't already released everybody. <laughs> but it, the Celtic ceremony is based on three, the number three, not the number four. And the Celtic morning starts at dusk and ends at dawn where the Native American begins at dawn and ends at dusk. And so they are two separate energies. The Celtic is connected to the moon and of course the Lakota is uh, connected to the sun. So I never mix them because it would be disastrous. And um, so if you have a cape or any regalia that's Celtic, bring it. I will have a few to lend out. Um, if you have a goblet and you're used to the Celtic ceremony, bring a goblet. We usually pass them, but because of the COVID, we will not be passing it. So you are welcome to bring your own and any other Celtic symbols that you have. So uh, I'm just going to let you experience it. The someplace on the site, um, I think that Terry posted all the meanings and why we use this and why we use that. And, and um, I just can't wait because I'm, I'm usually pouring yinipis and all that stuff, and, except here on my own property. And we do celebrate the Celtic. So I can't wait. I just, you know, what's so amazing to me, and this is not about the Celtic ceremony, but within this group, I don't see anyone saying, I know more than you do. I don't see anyone saying, I mean, <clears throat> I may have a, more years than any of you have on this planet. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I'm just blessed to be 85 and be, in, be where I'm at. And so, uh, that gives me a little edge, but not a lot. <laughs> and on the soul level, we're all the same anyway. And so it just amazes me that nobody stands up there and says, this is the way it is. You ought to believe this. It's just each one of you seems to be giving information from your perspective. And, um, you know... Um, we came here to play, although it, some of us in our early lives 
it didn't feel like a very nice game, I would have changed that <laughs> board game a little bit. But uh, out of it, I learned. And so I'm just excited. I don't get to put on my cape and my <clears throat> all my regalia very often in front of other people. So thank you, Terry, for asking. I, I am just, um, you can't see yourselves, but even on Zoom, when you share, I can see the white light around you. And it is amazing. It is amazing to see this, 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 um, it's almost like as the call has gone on, that white light has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So now there's no space between any of us. So, and I get to room with Pookie Lee and Rhonda Fisher. That will be fun. That will be fun. So thank you. And I'm hungry. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Terry, any final last words before we close out this evening? Or that you would like no. To <laughs> no. No. Grandmother yeah, good. must eat her no. dinner. Well, so, we didn't get our one word from Carla, did we? Carla's one word or one sentence. Mm. Oh, oh, you go, Daryl. It's a word that keeps coming up for me and it's been coming up for the past month and it came up again today um, at a sound healing session. And that word is congruent. Mm. Keeps coming up. So thank you. Many, many thanks to all of you. It has been a pleasure absolute pleasure to share this space with each and every one of you. Those of you that came back week after week, thank you. To all those that donated, thank you, thank you, because as you heard from what Thomas said, this isn't a money-making thing. It It's just spread out. We just share the love because somebody may need some gas, somebody may need some food, so it's not about making millions it's just about let's all get together and we'll gather up whatever little funds we can to make sure that happens and make sure that everybody gets here so again it is an honor absolute honor i cannot wait to spend this time with you for those of you that cannot attend this time know that you are so there in spirit and we are so connected no matter whether you're here, there, it's by location, it doesn't matter. You can be anywhere and still feel what's going on. So you're still connected to us and know that we will see you again. Because once our cross, our past cross, that's it. We're forever crossing. So, you know, here it goes. You're, you're stuck with us. <laughs> I know. It's like, if I get thrown in jail, Thomas and I, if we're doing something, you got to bail us out. Right. And if you need a kidney, we got to give you a kidney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so until Friday, I will see you all on Friday on behalf of all of us here. Thank you. Thank you. Each and every one of you for all that you do, for all your words, for your presence. It means so, so much. Thank you for sharing the love and we're gonna share it all together in ceremonies this weekend. So love to you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening until we see each other on Friday and we can give real hugs. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, later, dope shop. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Got Oh, that's awesome.